Let's see how to construct a public key crypto system based on the generalized discrete logarithm problem. In this video, we will explore key generation, encryption, and decryption. Let's begin with key generation. In key generation, we will consider a generator for a finite cyclic group. The generator is denoted by little g, and it is an element of the group big G. So big G denotes a finite cyclic group with the generator little g. We also need to choose a secret value s0. And we're going to choose the secret value from the set denoted by big S. From this set, we will choose secret values. And we first have to choose this value S0. And with this secret value and this generator, we're going to define a public value. The public value P0 is defined as G to the power of S0. So we're using this exponential notation. We're treating this as if it was a multiplicative group, but we're going to keep this more general. So we're going to use the notation of a multiplicative group, but we have to keep in mind that this is a general group operation. It does not have to be multiplication. So when you see this exponent over here, that means we are repeatedly applying the group operation. We're applying the group operation S0 times. So we have the generator, <clears throat> we have a secret value, and we have a public value. This gives us enough information to construct a pair of keys. We're going to have a secret key, which contains the secret value, and we're going to have a public key, which contains the public value. So first, let's have a look at the secret key, SK. Now, we can specify the group that we're working with, and we can also specify the set that we're uh, sourcing these secret values from. So that is some context information. And we also can specify the generator that we're using. And the most important value that we need to include in the secret key is this secret value that was selected from this set. So S0 gets included in the secret key. Now, what about the public key? Well, the public key is a pair with this secret key. So the public key, PK, also needs to include this context information. So we have to include information about what group we're using. We also have to uh, specify this set that we're choosing the secret values from. And we need to include the generator. And what is different is that we're not going to include the secret value in the public key because this is going to be sent through a public channel. So we're just going to have the public value P0 appearing here. So these are a pair of keys. The secret key is going to be used for decryption, and the public key is going to be sent through a public channel to another participant. And then that other participant is going to use this public key to perform encryption. So we're going to send this through a public channel. So imagine this area in the middle, this is a public channel. This is the first participant's area. So the first participant is generating the keys, and this participant that has generated the keys will also do decryption. Now, let's go over to this side. We're going to have another participant that is going to be doing encryption. So what does encryption involve? Well, encryption is going to use the public key to encrypt a secret message. This message is an element of the group. So it's important that we agree on what group we're using. Both of these participants have to agree on the algorithm that is being used. They have to agree on this group and this generator. So we have this message, which is an element of the group G. This is a finite cyclic group with this generator denoted by little g. Now, in this encryption procedure, we're also going to need to select a secret value. And we're going to call that secret value S1. And this secret value is chosen from the set big S. 
So here we have another secret value, and we also have this message. Now we're going to produce another public value. This public value is going to be called P1, and it is going to be defined as the generator raised to the power of S1. So the generator came in the public key. So that was present over here. So that's where that information has come from. And this secret value has been generated in the encryption procedure. And then we're also going to generate the ciphertext. So the ciphertext C is defined as the message times, now I'm using this time symbol. So this is a multiplication symbol, but uh, this is a placeholder for the group operation. So remember that this uh, operation does not have to be multiplication. It can be some more general type of operation. So we have the message times P0 to the power of S1. P0 has come in the public key. So the generator and this public value P0 have both come in the public key. They are publicly available because they were sent through a public channel. And now they're being used over here. So the generator is being used to define P1. That's another public value. And P0 is being used to define the ciphertext. And you can see that this secret value S1 is appearing in the definitions of P1 and C. So this is now the ciphertext. So we have encrypted the message. Now we're going to send the ciphertext through a public channel. So here we have a public channel, and the ciphertext is going to go through that public channel. So the ciphertext CT is going to include this value C, and it's also going to include this public value P1. And this public value P1 will be used in decryption. So now let's have a look at how decryption works. So now we're back to this participant. So the participant that generated the keys is now going to do decryption. So we have decryption over here. And to get the, the value of M, to recover that secret value M from the ciphertext, we can do the following procedure. So the message can be retrieved from the ciphertext if we multiply the ciphertext by P1 to the power of minus S0. So over here, we're, we're doing an inverse operation. That's what this minus sign is telling us. So you can see that here we have P1 and S0. But over here, we have P0 and S1. So S1 is the secret that is known in the encryption procedure. But that secret is unavailable to this participant. This participant only has access to S0. That comes from the secret key. So the secret key includes that secret value. So these secret values, S0 and S1, never get sent through the public channel. They have to remain secrets. If these secret values do not remain secret, then that compromises this public key crypto system. So this is what we're doing to extract the message out of the ciphertext. If we want to turn the message into the ciphertext, then we multiply by uh, this value over here. But if we want to go in the reverse direction, if we want to start with the ciphertext and extract the message, then we have to multiply by this factor. Why does this work? Let's see why this decryption procedure works. So we're going to write down this value, C times P1 to the power of minus S0. So that minus sign tells us that we're computing the inverse. We're computing an inverse value of P1 to the power of S0. So let's unpack what this is telling us. First, let's unpack this definition of C. We can substitute this definition over here. So C, the ciphertext, is actually the message times P0 to the power of S1. So that's just this value of C. And then we also have times P1 to the power of minus S0. But here's a very interesting fact. P1 to the power of S0 without the minus sign and P0 to the power of S1, they are actually the same value. And this concept actually is the basis for Diffie-Hellman key exchange. But that's a very uh, specific type of discrete logarithm problem. So in that case, we're actually doing multiplication mod a number. 
But this is a far more general situation. We're dealing with the generalized discrete logarithm problem. So this operation, denoted by the time symbol, it does not have to be multiplication. So this is what we're dealing with here. Now let's substitute these definitions for the public values. We can rewrite these public values in terms of the generator. So let's do that over here. So we're going to have the message times g to the power of s0, and that's being raised to the power of s1. And then we're multiplying by this factor. So we have g to the power of s1 to the power of minus s0. So that minus is very important. It means that we're dealing with the inverse. And now we can group this together using exponential laws. So that's going to give us the message times the generator raised to the power of, here we're going to have s0, s1. And then we're going to have minus s1, s0. So these values up here, by commutativity, are going to cancel. So in the exponent, we're going to have 0. So these guys will cancel. That means that this is equivalent to the message times the generator to the power of 0. And this is the identity in the group. And we can write that as 1. So we have m times 1. So this message, which is an element of the group, is being combined using the group operation with the identity element of the group. So that's the same as the message itself. So you can see why this combination that we're computing in the decryption procedure, that is equivalent to the message. So this is why this works. So you can substitute different uh, groups into this scheme, and you can try different group operations as well. And you can experiment with different generators for those groups. Ideally, what you want is uh, some a procedure which is very difficult to find patterns. So you want groups where there are uh, no, no clear patterns. Because if there's patterns in the group, if there's some underlying group structure, then there are techniques to speed up cryptanalysis. So what is publicly available? Everything that travels through the public channel is publicly available. So the public key and the ciphertext are all publicly available. What is secret? This value S0 in the key generation procedure, that is secret. It's present in the secret key. So that cannot be leaked out into the public channel. And S1 in the encryption procedure, that is also secret. So we are not sending the secret values through the public channel. But we are constructing these public values, and they're allowing us to encrypt and decrypt a message. So this is a public key crypto system based on the generalized discrete logarithm problem. Next, we will see how to adapt this procedure to construct a digital signature scheme.